This is the official Waukee Community School District podcast, Talk the Walk, presented by Unity Point Health Des Moines. Welcome to episode 14 of the Talk the Walk podcast presented by Unity Point Health Des Moines. My name is A.G. Ellingson, Communications Coordinator for the Waukee School District. We're coming to you today from the campus of Drake University, and you're about to hear a pretty familiar voice, Tucker DeVries, a 2021 graduate of Waukee High School, now plays basketball for the Drake Bulldogs, and thanks for being here, Tucker. We appreciate your time. Yeah, no problem. So let's talk about life in Des Moines. What's what's life like as a Division I athlete? Yeah, I mean, obviously I'm pretty familiar with the the Des Moines area, um, going to high school down the street, but uh, it's, it's been a lot of fun, uh, you know, just kind of moving out, being on my own, um, but also being close enough to go back home and still seeing a lot of familiar faces, uh, being able to support me um, at the games or um, being able to go back home and support, uh, been to a couple walkie games, which has been really cool to see a lot of, a lot of other faces which has been cool. Last time we saw you at Waukee, or a bunch of us saw you, like you were raising a, a state championship trophy. What's, how's life changed, your basketball life maybe in particular, how's that changed since then? Yeah, I mean, obviously that, that was a really fun uh, fun journey, but, um, and then I, then I took the next, next step, next chapter. Um, uh, came here and it's been a lot of fun. It's been a new journey, um, definitely different, but uh, it, it's been really exciting to, to adapt and uh, change to this, this new environment and uh, trying to win a championship here now. So I feel like you probably, there wasn't, from the outside, there was probably a huge difference between high school to college basketball, especially at the level that you play at. Was there anything that surprised you as you as you jumped and you made that next move? Yeah, I mean, obviously, basketball-wise, it's um, it, it's a lot more difficult. Everybody's uh, just as talented, just as good, probably the best player in a high school team. So it's um, it, it's obviously makes it a lot more difficult. You got to. Um, be able to be ready to go every day. That's probably the biggest difference I saw. Um, if you're not ready to go at the college level, then it, it, you're, you're going to pay the price for it. Um, but I'd say even outside of basketball, it's, it's a lot harder to just stay engaged uh, every day in the classroom. Uh, I mean, you wake early wake up calls, you go to weights, you go to class, you come to practice, and you got to take care of your body, your schoolwork at night. Um, compared to high school, you could kind of, I mean, there's be, there'd be times where you could kind of cruise through it, but you, you can't really do that uh, at the college level. So you guys have been to Florida already. You've had a couple of road trips. You've had games canceled, postponed, all of that. But let's talk about your favorite part. What's What's been the most exciting or, or just the, something that you've looked back on this first couple of months and be like, that was awesome? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's been a lot of fun um, kind of just adapting to the new level. I mean, Playing college basketball is definitely an experience I've, I've really enjoyed. Um, I mean, the trip to Florida was awesome. It didn't really go go as planned, but I, I'd say that that was a lot of fun to be around the team for in Florida for a week. Um, but I, I would say there's been a lot of times, uh, not one specific moment. Um, I mean, obviously, winning games is a lot of fun. So I'd say after every win, it, it makes uh, all the work and uh, um, all the offseason work that much worth it. So now you're into. Valley play. I mean, there, who knows? There might be another non-conference game sprinkled somewhere. But what's Missouri Valley Conference basketball like? Um, so the biggest difference between non-conference and conference is how, how much more people. I mean, I'm not going to say they don't care about the non-conference, but pe- people are just. I mean, everybody really wants to win those conference games. It, it means so much more. Um, I mean, winning a conference championship is on everybody's mind, especially right now. Um, and it, it, I think anybody in the league could win it this year. So it, it's really just trying to be engaged and uh, take it one game at a time and just win that next one and then uh, see where chips fall at the end. Okay, so give us something that we don't know. What's one thing about college basketball that anybody who doesn't play it won't know? Um, I would say the one thing would just be how much work it goes into it outside of just on the court. Um, I'd say there, there's so much more work and time invested than people probably realize. Um, like I said kind of earlier, it's 7, 8 a.m. wake-up calls for weights. Then you, then you go to classroom for two, three, four hours, study hall for, you know, four or five hours a week. Um, I mean, it, it's just a grueling schedule and just um, trying to stay engaged and really taking care of yourself because if you don't stay on top, of, uh, on top of that, then you can really fall behind and it, it can get hard. You're listening to the Talk the Walk podcast with our featured guest, Tucker DeVries. We'll be back in just a second, but first a word with our official sponsor, Unity Point Health Des Moines. 
We are here with Dr. Sarah Jones from Unity Point Clinic Family Medicine, Waukee. Today's topic, the importance or lack thereof of screen time. Dr. Jones, what's your advice for screen time in families? So we recommend having two hours or less of recreational screen time. So that's any time outside of school that they're using screens. And, you know, screens are important for educational purposes, but it's really important to make sure that you're spending time with family, getting outdoors, and getting activity and exercise outside of screen time. Dr. Sarah Jones with Unity Point Clinic Family Medicine, Waukee. We are back on the Talk the Walk podcast with Drake freshman Tucker DeVries. Let's talk some Waukee hoops. You don't have to tell us who you rooted for, but did you pay attention to the Waukee versus Northwest game with you had a couple of former teammates playing against each other? Yeah, I was actually there for that game. Um, I mean, what a game that was. So that was really exciting yeah. to see. Uh, you know, I, I have a lot of friends, um, a lot of coaches. I mean, Coach Kanaski was with me all, all three years throughout that, and it was fun to watch him, uh, you know, co- Coach Waukee. And, um, but I, I, was, I didn't really have a favorite. I mean, I had a lot of friends on both teams. Um, but I think it, I thought it was a really good game. Um, it was probably one of the crazier games I've ever seen. So, but it was definitely cool to be back uh, in the field house and uh, seeing everybody and just watching a great basketball game. I mean, as a neutral fan now, right? You, and we'll just take sign up for more of those games in the future. That yeah. Was a crazy game. Yeah, it was. Um, when you look back at your journey there, how close did you, did you when you were watching that game in the stands? Are you seeing and visualizing yourself back on that floor? Was it was it an awkward sense of? I mean, I'd spent blood, sweat, and tears on this court for years, and now it's somebody else's turn. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, looking back at it, it's, I mean, that was three years of um, my basketball career, and a, a lot of my memories come from come from that gym. A lot of the workouts, the hard work come from that gym. Um, but it's really cool to see a lot of these young guys um, that, that I've watched grow up, and then now they're blossoming into the players they are now. And it, it was really cool to see everybody. Um, I, I thought... Both teams were really talented and fun to watch, and I'm excited to see how they end up at the end of the year. So your team last year was obviously loaded with talent. How, um, with you and Peyton uh, going to Division One school, I mean, he's still not very far down the road from you. How close are you um, still with him and, then, and then that whole entire team, the talent that you had last year? Yeah, I mean, I'd say me and Peyton, uh, we're, we're still really close. I mean, we, we've call, probably called at least once or twice a week and um, just kind of checked in and watched each other's games. Um, it's been really fun and cool to watch uh, – have another team to cheer for and uh, watch him uh, as he continues his career. But I'd say I, I've I've been in touch with uh, pretty much everybody else on the team too. Yeah. Um, I mean, th- that team was probably one of the closest teams I've ever been a part of. And uh, I mean, we have friendships for life on that team. So just kind of following everybody's journey, staying in touch and uh, it, just excited for anybody's success on that team. That might kind of bleeds into this next question. What advice would you give to, to future high school teams about about last year's team to get to the level um, of the state championship? What what made that team get to that point? Yeah, I mean, the biggest advice I'd have is just you know focusing on the the now. Um, I mean, it's very easy to like kind of look look into the future, um, be excited about the future, which is fine, but. Just really focusing on the now because you, you can't change the future and you can't change the past. So just, I mean, really worrying about the now, the next game, the next practice, enjoying those little moments, um, whether it's, I mean, even just the, like the bus rides, being in the team locker room, the practices. Um, I mean, at the end of it, I mean, even even I'd say I, you, you want some of those back. Um, as fun as the future is going to be for you, um, nothing compares to high school basketball. Um, but I, I, I'd say, yeah, just just enjoy the present, enjoy it while it lasts, because um, the future is going to come, uh, wh- whether you enjoy the now or not. So, favorite memory from your time at Waukee High School is it is it as easy as saying the state championship game and and everything that went with it? I mean, yeah, I I, I mean, it, it's pretty easy to say it was the state championship just because of the, the emotional high that you're on after that game. Um, but I'd say. It's just being around the guys, like I said, just being in the locker room, being on the bus rides, going out to eat with the team. Um, those are the memories that you, you kind of remember forever. Um, you know, the relationships you built there, um, those those will last forever. And um, just kind of enjoying every moment, um, taking it in high school, it was really fun. And now you're, you're playing for your dad. So we have to ask what, what that was. I know that's a huge part of the recruiting process and, and the job that he's done here, but what, what's that been like, everything you thought it would be? Yeah, I mean, it, I wouldn't say it's been too difficult. Um, I, I feel like uh, the team, the, the coaching staff, has done a really good job of just kind of making it as normal as possible, which has been good. But, 
I mean, yeah, there's definitely times he's he's probably either a little harder on me and uh, <laughs> wants to yell at me a little more. But it, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I, I don't think I could have asked for it to go a better way so far. So I'm excited about it. And as we come out, turn the calendar to the second half of your season, what's what's the biggest goal out there? I mean, obviously we've, we've talked about the Valley Conference title, but what's what's the, the thing that sticks out there the most that, that you need to get done in the next couple of months? Yeah, I mean, I'd say just – our consistency, we've kind of had an up and down year a little bit. So I'd say if we just became uh, become more consistent in how we're playing and how to the level we should be playing, I, I feel like we're going to be in the right spot at the end of the year and hopefully have a have a run in March. Tucker, we appreciate your time. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, no problem. Thank and you. Enjoy the rest of your freshman year on the Drake campus. That's Tucker DeVries as part of our featured guest on the Talk the Walk podcast presented by Unity Point Health Des Moines. Thanks for listening to Talk the Walk, the official podcast of the Waukee Community School District, presented by Unity Point Health Des Moines. This is the official Waukee Community School District podcast, Talk the Walk, presented by Unity Point Health Des Moines. Welcome to episode number 14, part two of the Talk to Wad podcast presented by Unity Point Health Des Moines. My name is A.G. Ellingson, communications coordinator for Waukee. We're coming to you today from Des Moines, Iowa, on the campus of Drake University. And you're about to hear a familiar voice, Katie Dinebeer, a 2021 graduate of Waukee High School. Katie, thanks for not forgetting about us. We appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. So so what's new? Last time we saw you, you and your teammates were raising a trophy at Waukee High School. How's, how's life now? Yeah, gosh, life is amazing. Uh, started up basketball here June 5th, so been here for a while. Um, we started off the season. Uh, we had one of the best conference records or non-conference records that we've had since the 1980s, so we've been playing really good. It's been a lot of fun just to get to know the team and the coaching staff. So, so the Division One athlete is always kind of like a huge goal. Like, that was, I want to be a D1 athlete when I grow up. What do you know now about being a D1 athlete that you didn't know when you were having those dreams growing up? Yeah, gosh. I mean, it's all <laughs> fun and games until you get here. <laughs> um, no, but it's still fun. Um, one thing that I think is just definitely just kind of a wake-up call is how much of a time commitment it is. I think everyone says that you're going to be super busy, but you don't really realize it until you get to school. Um, I go from, at least in first semester, I went from having classes from 9 to 2 every day, and then we'd have practice from 2 to 6, including weights and film and stuff. So and then you have the rest of the night to study. So it's really a full-time job. Yeah, that's, that's a busy day. Yeah. <laughs> so there have been a lot of cool moments. What's been your favorite part of your freshman year so far? Uh, definitely a highlight would have to be hitting a buzzer beater against Creighton. Yeah. <laughs> that was something that I was really that was fun. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'll be something I remember for a long time. So, been Valley Newcomer of the Week, 19 points against Iowa State, right? So, two-part question here. What part of your game has transitioned from high school to college the easiest? And then when you're watching film, what sticks out as a thing that you're, you're working on now? Yeah, definitely something I'm working on is getting around bigger defenders. I think you get and play like Big Ten teams, Power Five schools, and everyone's tall, everyone's huge. And for a short guard like me, it's been a lot harder to get a shot off um, and draw contact. So that's definitely something I've been working on. I think something that transitioned is just my leadership as like a floor general coming in as point guard. I think it's something that you have to have. You have to be composed and you have to be able to direct and help your team. So I think that's something that's transitioned well, um, playing point guard in high school. I know there was a whole bunch of change from Drake to last year to Drake this year. How has that all been going? Yeah, it's been going really good. And the coaching staff is amazing. I, I wouldn't want to play for anyone else. Allison's done an amazing job. And with five freshmen, I mean, we have a pretty new team, five freshmen, one transfer um, out of our 14 kids. So I think we've done a really good job adapting. We play well together. So this season's been all over the place due to COVID and sickness. So how has that been? I mean, there, there, there's a schedule, but there really is I mean, maybe, right? Yeah. So how have you navigated that? How have you kind of stayed in tune to practice when you you kind of think you know who's coming next, but you can't be really sure until you step on? Gosh, uh, coaches remind us every day you got to play every game like it's your last. You'll never know. We had last week, we had a couple of our kids test positive for COVID, so we were short down to nine players. Um, so I think just things change every day, and we just got an email today that we're not going back to school, so we're going remote. So I think just play every game like it's your last. You never know what's going to change and who you're going to play. 
You're listening to the Talk the Walk podcast with our featured guest, Katie Dindabier. But first, a word with our official sponsor, Talk the Walk, of Talk the Walk, Unity Point Health, Des Moines. I'm here with Dr. Patricia Newland, Regional Vice President and Medical Director with Unity Point Clinic Central Iowa. Dr. Newland, figuring out where to go for care can sometimes be a little tricky. Do you have any advice? I sure do. I would say start with your regular primary care doctor. If you need a physical, they're surely going to get you on their schedule. Sometimes if you have a sick visit or an injury, if they can't fit you in, we have other choices too. Right here in Waukee is Unity Point Clinic Express. This is a great place to get efficient um, and very safe care by some of our best providers. Um, They can get you in and out uh, relatively quickly and are able to um, take care of things such as a sore throat or a sprained ankle. Maybe you have a funny rash. These are things that get our life off track but can easily be addressed here at WAP in Waukee um, at the Unity Point Clinic Express. Dr. Patricia Newland, Regional Vice President and Medical Director with Unity Point Clinic Central Iowa. We are back with Drake freshman Katie Dinnebeer. Let's talk some Waukee hoops. So the Warriors and the Wolves played a couple of weeks ago. You don't have to tell me who you cheered for, but what was that like? I mean, you bl- blood, sweat, and tears on that gym for years, and then you're I've seen you back a couple of times talking to what what's that whole been like as you watched others do what you did yeah gosh it's so different but it's so cool to just see kids pick up right where we left off I mean going out of state champions I think that can be a lot of pressure sometimes especially when losing four seniors um but I think everyone northwest and Waukee has done an amazing job and it's fun to watch them compete how close are you paying attention to them and just kind of the, the your former teammates your former coaches how how, do, how will you stay in tune yeah, I love talking. I'll reach out to guests all the time. So still a really close connection with him. I reach out to a lot of the girls, and it's fun to watch them play. I like to see them succeed. Speaking of the guest family, I was talking with both of them uh, over break, and there are, they mentioned that there are 10 Waukee High School grads uh, from Waukee Girls Basketball playing college basketball this year. Like, that's a crazy number to yeah. me. W- why? How is that possible? Gosh, I think it says a lot about our program. I think just the hard work and dedication that came from all the Waukee basketball players and the guests do a great job. I think that's one of the special things about that team and something I love so much is that they make it such a family feel. Like they were really my second family going to the gym. I text them any time and they'd be there to rebound or uh, go out for dinner. So I think that's what made our team so special. Are you, as you were kind of like freshman and sophomore, are you, are you paying attention to kind of one, how, how good the players were that were – but also kind of what, how they were handling success and how they were kind of getting that, that ramp up to the D1 level and, and the college basketball level? Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, it's just fun to watch everyone change their game and just succeed, and I think it's been fun to follow everyone. How close are you staying con- – I mean, you mentioned the senior class that you had last year. I mean, how fun is it just to kind of look around the country and see the names pop up of your teammates all over the place? Yeah, it's really cool, and I think everyone's doing a really good job. So it's been fun to follow everyone and keep in touch, and I'll definitely see them over break. So the, the obvious answer here is the state championship, but let's – if there was another second favorite memory of your time at Waukee High School, could you pick that out? <laughs> Gosh, uh I don't know. Honestly, just spending time with the coaches and the team, I think it's just fun. <laughs> like, looking back, um, yeah, I think just spending time with everyone. Is there a moment uh, back in your childhood days where you were kind of like, basketball is my jam, like I want, this is what, how I want to spend the next years of my life? Yeah, I used to play pickup in the driveway with my brother and my dad. And I was a gymnast for the longest time, so I going into fourth grade when I started basketball, I had no hand-eye coordination. I was terrible. Um, so just playing in the, in the front yard with my dad and my brother, I think that's what really just gave me the love for the game. And I think a good question to ask here after that question is what, what advice would you give to the third and fourth graders are out in their driveway playing basketball with their siblings and their parents. What what would you say to them? <laughs> Honestly, just have fun. Just be in the moment. I think it's so much like people get caught up on, oh, if I don't do this, I'm not going to go D1 or, oh, I need to get in the gym more. But honestly, just live in the moment and have fun. If I could go back, I think that's one thing I would tell myself. Like, work hard, be in the gym a lot, but just enjoy it. We kind of turned the calendar to the second half now of your freshman year. What What's the biggest thing that, like, on your to-do list? What, what do you hope that you get done between now and March? Uh, between now and March, I hope we go undefeated the rest of the uh, conference. Um, we've had a pretty rocky start, but I think everything's just kind of clicking together, and I think we'll have a really good second half of conference. 
We appreciate your time, Katie. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for tuning in to the Talk to Walk podcast, and thanks to our presenting sponsor, Unity Point Health Des Moines. We'll be back with another episode of Talk to Walk in just a few weeks. Thanks for listening to Talk the Walk, the official podcast of the Waukee Community School District, presented by Unity Point Health Des Moines.